Welcome to Five Points Blues presentation of Back to the Basics. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. Here are your hosts, Nikki Harrison and Christy Scales. Hello and welcome to Five Points Blue Back to the Basics. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. I'm Nikki Harrison here with Christy Scales. I am so excited to be back here in the studio. It seems like it's been forever. Well, we got to be in the big TV studio last yes. week with Charlotte Jones Anderson as our special guest to kick off the regular season. And so we sure appreciate her yeah. taking the time and also the entire broadcasting department for all of the extra effort that it takes to uh, do that it room. Is different. It is different. <laughs> but one of the things that we were talking about last week, a along with the Dallas Cowboys studio collection, the upscale uh, attire for women, the line that's uh, out now, is the market at the Star. And it got rained out last yes, weekend. It did. And so <laughs> it has been uh, rescheduled for September 22nd. So we invite uh, it, not just ladies to come do some shopping at the flea style pop up market mm -hmm. that's going to be all through the Star, uh, nine to through the evening, nine, right. starting at 9 a.m. on September 22nd. But it's a family event. And so uh, there'll be like face painting, there'll be activities for the kids. And then uh, we invite the husbands and grandpas to come along too, because uh, the different venues, whether it's the restaurants or on the Tostitos Plaza, there'll be plenty of college football. So Absolutely. if you'd rather watch college football than shop, that'll be offered <laughs> as well. <laughs> so come on out. Yeah. <laughs> September 22nd. Um, so let's just Jump right into it. Let's get started. Give us a call, 888-855-2297. Uh, again, that's 888-855-2297. I have to memorize it again. There we go, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I do have a question to, to, to get us kicked off. Kelly in Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. She says, welcome back, ladies. Thank you. After watching Sunday's game, Christy, please explain the point of preseason games. The Cowboys... <laughs> <laughs> the Cowboys and even some of the Panthers looked winded. Zeke looked rusty and he didn't play any uh, during the preseason. She asked, I'm just curious, why do we have preseason games? Well, and the because college does not <laughs> at all. Because and college so that, does well, not. well, no, oh, I mean, okay. that, that's, you know, why, why would the NFL team still have uh, preseason games when college football, hey, you know, they have just no right preseason. They just go straight into it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's to get acclimated. It's to get pr those practice games in. You're cutting your roster from 90 down to 53 plus 10 that you can bring back for the practice squad. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a dress rehearsal. And that's what it's been for years and years and years. Okay. But uh, now the emphasis is on keeping players healthy. So Zeke Elliott, the last couple, he didn't play at all in preseason. Not. And did he look rusty? Was it also more the blocking on Sunday at Carolina? Yeah. But, um, and Dak Prescott only uh, had two games and what about maybe uh, six offensive series, if that. Okay. The So it, it showed that the starters hardly play anymore in the NFL in preseason games. Okay. That and is, I've also heard that um, a lot of it has to do with this is an opportunity to see some of the players who are more of your third and, 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 and fourth string players get an opportunity that's right. to get a job somewhere else. And they get plenty more opportunity in these four preseason games than they used to okay. because teams are reluctant to play starters, uh, you know, because they don't want to get people hurt. So these young guys are, are getting longer looks. And so that's, that's very helpful for the young guys, I think of a couple of examples on the team right now. Jeff Heath, an undrafted rookie free agent who came in and, and made the squad and is now a starter. Brett Maher, our, our new kicker, had a terrific preseason and a terrific training camp, beat out Dan Bailey. Okay. So, you know, the extended preseason time is really helpful for some of these guys who are right on the margin. We call them bubble players okay. that are right on the bubble. And sometimes that, that uh, fourth preseason game or the third preseason game can really – put them over the edge. Okay. But in, gonna... in, the, in the past, what happened was the, the um, now back in the 60s and 70s and maybe even the early 80s, but certainly the 60s and 70s with the Cowboys, football was not a year-round job. 
you know, Roger right. St- guys sold insurance right. in the off season. Roger Staubach started dabbling in real estate, and we all know the success he became okay. in that mm-hmm. uh, uh, area of business. And uh, so you would have a longer training camp, and you'd have like over a hundred people rookies invited to to uh, training camp. And so there used to be six preseason games, and they truly did use that time to get into shape, okay. right? Okay. And they would actually like really hit in training yeah. camp and they would, you know, they'd play more of the starters and stuff and work up to the regular season. But then when it was reduced to four preseason games, mm-hmm. then it got, you know, and now with the salary cap and if you have a key player go down and they can't help you that year and you have so much salary cap, so much money committed to them that, okay. you know, you don't, you don't want to risk them. Gotcha. So, so do you think in your opinion that this does – maybe a little bit of a disservice to your starters if they have not played any during the preseason, haven't really been hit, and then they come out Sunday, first game, doesn't matter if it's first game or your 16th game. It's still an important game. Oh, yeah, they all count the same. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, missed tackles. There were over 15 missed tackles by the Cowboys' defense. A lot of those guys had, you know, maybe only played a game or two in preseason. But guess what? You don't get to – you hardly ever hit in training camp. And you don't hit in the offseason heading into training camp. So are you going to get ugly football at the start of the year when uh, the main guys aren't playing in preseason and you don't have all that contact in training camp like you used to in the old days? Yeah. Is everything going to look sloppy? Are you going to have a lot of penalties? Yes. Is it a disservice to these players to ha- throw them out there in week one and expect them to be, you know, midseason peak mm-hmm. performance when they've hardly played? Yeah, but it's also a disservice to the fans because that was some ugly football. Yeah. And I'm not just yeah. talking about the Cowboys offense. I'm talking about you look around the league and like that Thursday opener, Atlanta mm-hmm. at uh, Philadelphia. Oh, gosh. Ooh, that was some ugly football. Yes. And so, you know, the – the missed tackles by the Cowboys' defense. The um, they weren't in sync, right. particularly the th- the in the passing. passing game. I mean, that was a pretty ugly display mm-hmm. in the passing game. But those guys just didn't get to work together. And okay. even when Dak was playing in the preseason games, mm-hmm. not all of the wide receivers were healthy at the time. You had you had uh, Deontay Thompson out with an Achilles injury. You had Alan Hearns miss a lot of preseason with a hamstring injury. So, you know, they, they just hadn't even played together. Tavon Austin missed some time with a, a hamstring in preseason. So, yeah, hey, it's Carolina Panthers. It's one of the top defenses in the league. Sure. Go get them, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and we, we saw that. Now, just one more point about sure. preseason because I think Kelly uh, from Little Rock asked a great, great question. One of the things that's going to be happen in the next uh, contract between the league and the players, the NFL Players Association, it's called the Collective Bargaining Agreement. And when does that come up? In- it would be two more, three more years. Three they, more they have years. they have like okay. two years to negotiate. Okay. And then, but um, you may have heard before about. Uh, cutting the preseason from four games to two games Mm -hmm. and going to an 18-game regular season. Yes. And Jerry Jones, about two and a half weeks ago, even kind of floated that out there, you know. And and it would be great for the owners Mm. to have a longer regular season. Mm -hmm. Of course it would. Because when the broadcasting contracts come up and you've got Fox and CBS and ESPN and NBC and everybody, all the platforms that you have now – Yahoo and everybody else. Um, if you have 18 regular season games instead of 16, you can get a lot more money. Absolutely. But the NFL Players Association is like, hey, we can barely get through 16 games yes. with you know physically because there are so many injuries and it's such a tough sport. So they're going to argue to expand the roster from 53 players to more players. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. hey, so the league's the league's going to make more money, but you know, let's get some more. Yeah, everyone will make a higher salary, but we need to expand the rosters because I I personally think 18 game regular season is a horrible idea okay and maybe it's because as the sideline reporter I'm so focused on injuries I'm hyper focused on that and so you just see the attrition rate Mm. just to get through the season Mm -hmm. and man it's you know I'm not excited about middle of January Cincinnati versus Cleveland when it's minus five degrees and you've got <laughs> second and third team quarterbacks yes. being protected by third and fourth stringers because 
uh, you know, nobody else is healthy and there's only 12,000 people in the stands because both teams are nine games out of first place. Yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, <laughs> Ma- you're out there freezing. Yeah. <laughs> ma- ma- mainly I'm concerned about players' health because, you know, we can barely get through uh, 16 games in a regular season. Well, cool. mm-hmm. thank you, Kelly. Great question. Okay. This one actually comes from me. I wrote it down because it was okay. kind of. Okay. What is all of this talk, all of this rumble about play calling? Okay. So last season, Offensive coordinator Scott Linehan was on the sideline. This past game, he was in the booth, correct? That he was. He okay. had moved. He had moved that final preseason game. But so, so, what's going on there? Who's talking to whom? I know there can't be a lot of chatter on the headsets. There is amongst the coaches. Okay. Among the coaches, there's there's chatter, and then Scott calls the play down from the uh, Scott Linehan, our offensive coordinator, mm-hmm. is calling play. So he calls the play down to the sideline. Okay. And then it goes to Kellen Moore and then it goes into Dak Prescott. Okay. So uh, the quarterback and then one player on defense okay. is allowed to have a radio receiver in the helmet. Okay. So that so, radio receiver in the helmet, is he, mm-hmm. for example, Dak, is he hearing Coach Linehan or is he hearing? He, he's allowed to hear from one person. He's allowed to okay. hear the play call. And then on defense, <laughs> <laughs> For the Cowboys, it's Sean Lee. Okay. And when Sean Lee is not on the field, then it's uh, Jalen Smith. I know that Sean and Jalen are on the field together at the same time because Jalen starts at middle linebacker and Sean starts at weak side linebacker. But on defense, you can designate two players to have a, a radio helmet. Okay. But only one radio helmet can be worn at a time out on the field. Got so, it. so when Sean is wearing, and it has a green dot on it. So you'll notice this yes. when you see on TV, it's like, why does Sean have a green dot on the back of his helmet? And nobody else does. That's the radio helmet. If Sean Lee were off the field then, and Jalen were out there, then Jalen would switch to his green dot helmet. He has, okay. he has a couple helmets on the sideline, okay. so he can switch. Now, and so, so, so he gets the, the play. Chatter? So he gets the, no, okay. the players on the, the one player on defense and the quarterback on offense hear the play call from the designated coach on the sideline Got who it. is relaying it in Got it. for the Cowboys defense. Uh, this year, it's, it's a change up in the, in the past. It was Matt Eberflus, who was our linebackers coach, but less left this off season to go to Indianapolis to be right. the defensive coordinator there. So the person who has taken over it, relaying the calls from defensive coordinator, Rod Marinelli to Sean Lee is Chris Richard, okay. our new defensive backs coach okay. uh, on offense. Uh, Linehan is still calling the plays, but now, as you mentioned, he's back up in the booth. Um, I say back up in the booth. He's up in the booth for the first time as a as a cowboy play caller mm-hmm. up there. Um, and it's really the preference, Nikki, of okay. some, some coaches like to be up there. Their whole careers, they'll call plays from up there. Ernie Zampezi, Norv Turner, some of the great play callers we've had in the past, they prefer to be up in the booth. Okay. Other guys prefer to be down on the sideline. Rod Marinelli, our defensive coordinator who calls the defensive plays, again, Ray uh, relayed through Coach Richard to Sean Lee is on the sideline. So okay. it's really it's a really different vantage point yes. to be up high and kind of see it all displayed down there, and you can really see routes. You know, you, you just you just have a you have an eagle's eagle eye perspective, okay. right? Okay. Um, but some guys like to be down on the sideline where maybe you don't have as great a view, but you have coaches that are up in the booth. Your assistants mm-hmm. are up there relaying information to you. So, for example, we have two coaches that work with our offensive line. Our offensive line coach is Paul Alexander. Mm-hmm. He's new to the Cowboys this yes. year. He is down on the sideline, and he's talking with his linemen, you know, when the, they're sitting on the bench. Mark Colombo is the assistant offensive line coach. Yeah, the former Cowboy right tackle. And he is up in the booth. And so he is talking to Paul Alexander. And there, you know, Mark is telling him what he sees up in the booth from that vantage point. They're discussing. But then, you know, Paul is the one talking to But once they're on the sideline, any of those guys can put on a headset Mm -hmm. and talk with – with the coaches up in the booth. So oh if goodness. Mark if Mark wanted to tell Tyron Smith or Connor Williams or, you know, they, they can all communicate once they're on the sideline if they put on the headsets. But when a player is on the field, the one player on defense and the quarterback on offense, they are 
only allowed to hear the play call, and we know that there's a, a play there's a play clock. Yes. At 15 seconds, when the play clock gets down to 15 seconds, there's an official a game, uh, up in the booth, and they cut off that communication system. Oh. So Dak can't hear anything in his helmet. Okay. When it's Below under 15. 15 seconds. Interesting. Because that would be unfair to, you know, come up to the line of scrimmage and everybody's doing their pre-snap movement and the defense is making adjustments. That wouldn't be fair to have the coach say, hey, watch the, you know, single high, you know, throw there, you know. Gotcha. Look on it, you know, watch out, they're blitzing from the left, you know, that kind of, I mean, they have code words for that. And so Coach Garrett is hearing everything. Coach Garrett hears everything. They have a, and you see him, actually, they kind of tease Jason Garrett about his uh, belt pack (laughs) with all the different (laughs) things. But yeah, they all have different buttons and can talk to each other. So if if, uh, Jason wanted to say something specifically to a coach or, you know, he could... He could do that. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Very there, there is a lot going on down there. There's a frequency coordinator. Uh, his name is Keller McCrary, and he does not just the home games but travels on the away games. All the teams have their own frequency coordinators, and then Dewey is his assistant, and they, they do a great job, but they are making sure that all the, the – communication system is is working not just uh from the play caller to the players on the field but yeah. amongst all the coaches and from the booth and down and by the way let's say that we're playing the giants on sunday mm-hmm. and which we are at 7 20 yes. central sunday night football at at&t stadium if there if there were to be a technical problem with one sideline like let's say the uh, giant system went out okay or you know for a few minutes it was off yes well, then the Cowboys would have to turn off theirs because okay, it would be sense. it would be unfair for the Giants to have to not have we have it, but they don't. Right. So right. for competitive balance, both sidelines, it needs to be working. Do it like they did it centuries ago. Well, a, a century ago, because I know <laughs> Green Bay celebrated what their one hundredth. Isn't season? that awesome? That is so awesome. Still my favorite road trip, Lambeau Field. Anybody who really, you know, says they're a huge football fan, not just Cowboy fan, but if you love the NFL, if you love tradition, if you love history, if you ever get to go on one road trip, I hope you go to Green Bay and go to Lambeau Field because it's so so unique, so special. The people are so hospitable. Go early so that you can tailgate and, Take you know, Lambeau in. Field, they've modernized it and so it's very nice now, but but they also were able to keep that tradition That's as awesome. well. That's yeah, awesome. Special That's really place. Cool. Okay, got another question. Barbara in Red Oak, Texas. She is asking, Christy, do you still have faith in our new kicker? Why cut Dan Bailey and go with the guy who's never kicked in the NFL? Ooh, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and from Red Oak, my husband's family is in Red Oak, so we may be related. I don't, um, to Barbara there. Um, I May I tell this funny story? Okay. Sure. So this is at Carolina on Sunday, and we, our radio crew, we uh, travel over on the early team bus. Yeah. Uh, there's one that leaves about three and a half hours before kickoff, and another one that leaves two and a half hours. So we get to the stadium about three hours before kickoff. Go get my gear, walk out on the field. There are literally maybe five people on the field. Okay. Yeah. And three of them are security guards. One is me just walking around the perimeter to get over to the Cowboys sideline. And the other is our new kicker, Brett Maher. Okay. I was and saying his name wrong. Yeah, it's Maher. <laughs> and M-A-H-E-R. But he pronounces it Maher. Maher. He pronounces it Maher. So. Okay. Uh, so he is out at about the 40-yard line, and he's not in his jersey. He's just in a Cowboys t-shirt and shorts. And he's visualizing. He's at the 40 and kind of like going through his motions and just kind of like, there is one person in the stands, okay? And yeah. it is it is not a fan. The fans aren't allowed in until like two hours before kickoff. I think he actually was a concession worker. Okay. But he, he was a big Cowboy fan, and he is on the front row behind the goalposts, and he's yelling out to the guy visualizing that he's kicking field goals at the 40-yard line. Bailey, Dan Bailey, I see you, number five. Call Dan Bailey. No. And I happened to be walking by just then. And I'm like, um, you know, we cut Dan Bailey, right? That's Brett Maher, and he's number two. And he's like, we cut Dan Bailey? <laughs> so obviously, they maybe they don't have the internet in Charlotte. I you don't know. Make it. Yeah, didn't, did, make, it didn't make it there. But um, I. Uh, I like Brett Maher a lot. Okay. And he only got one attempt on 
in Sunday's game, and he missed it. It was late in the third quarter. It was a 47-yarder. Nikki, it it missed by inches. In fact, it, it, it just started to blow. It just started to drift. And it actually, you know those those orange flags yes. at the top of the pole? I really think it touched on the outside of it. it that, did. That's how close it did, right, Douglas? Douglas wow. Fairflow is yeah, our it producer. Absolutely did. It absolutely <laughs> from the sideline, I actually thought it was good. All of us on the sideline thought that it was you know, it, okay. because Maher hit it strong. I mean, it was you know, good distance. Didn't you think, Douglas, when it left his foot, it's like, yeah. oh, this looks good. And then it just kind of drifted off at the last second. But the question that Barbara asks is actually similar to the question that I asked LP Latisar, our deep snapper, and Jeff Swaim, who's our starting tight end now, but also a core guy on special teams. Okay. They were our guests on the Cowboys Hour last night mm-hmm. along the Dallas Cowboys radio network. And I said, talk Cowboys Nation off the edge <laughs> because they're still upset about Dan Bailey being cut. Yes. And Brett Maher in his first attempt, first and only attempt in his first NFL game, misses it. Doesn't matter if you miss it by three inches, six inches, or miss sixty a miss. feet. A miss is a miss. And they both, both LP and Jeff, basically said the same thing. You know, yeah, don't just judge him on that one kick. It's on the body of work. And he was so solid, so consistent, such a strong leg. Did such a great job through preseason and training camp and OTAs that, you know, they they have confidence in him. Okay. And, and I don't think that's just lip service. Okay. And, and those are the guys that work with them specifically. Right. LP said, you know, it's kind of funny because the wind was swirling a little bit at Carolina. You know, the flags up at the top of the stadium were blowing one way, but down on the field they were kind of blowing the other. And and I, I hesitate to say that because LP wasn't saying that to try and make an excuse. Yeah. In the NFL, you make it or you don't. That's right. But, um, yeah, the other thing about Brett Maher, it, he's a great story. Um he is 28 years old, okay. and yet this is his first year in the NFL. He kicked a few years in the CFL. He had tried out for the Cowboys before. He spent a couple of weeks at training camp back in 2013, or was it 2015? 2015, I think. And, um, you know, has been at different tryouts and all that. And, and one of these guys who just he just kind of needed a chance yeah and a lot of times you bring in every summer and off season you bring in an extra leg right to rest your uh starting punter to rest your starting kicker and frankly all of us thought he was a just a camp leg okay you know but he did he he beat out dan bailey this summer but he he's from nebraska originally he kicked at university of nebraska and and uh he lives in lincoln and he's been married five years he has a four-year-old and a near two-year-old daughter and his wife jenna they said uh you know he didn't know that he had made the team until the final roster cut down on September 1st. His wife and daughters are back in Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, my gosh. So I said, well, are your <laughs> girls moving down? Are they, you know, is the family coming down to join you now that you've made the team? Mm-hmm. And he said, well, you know, my do- my uh, wife used to teach kindergarten, and now she teaches fourth grade. And the school year has already started. That's right. And she didn't want to leave the school district in a lurch. So they're staying. They're staying. And so he's going to, so Brett is actually living in an extended stay hotel. Wow. And uh, Jenna, the wife, did fly out to Charlotte for the season opener um, since it was Brett's first NFL game. So she was there. But the whole family will be down this Sunday night oh, that's uh, nice. for his yes. you know, regular season opener and Sunday night football. So hopefully the result is better on the field. Very but good. It's really a great great story this is a guy who's Sounds shown like a it. lot of perseverance he's either incredibly stubborn stubborn or has great perseverance one or the other <laughs> well so it sounds like the answer to your question is yes you yes do have i faith. do have faith in him <laughs> well i have one more thing before uh-huh. well actually two more things i'm okay I'm get to him quickly um last night Jay Witt's debut on monday night yes. football yes i saw your piece on five points blue uh-huh. um coach saying that he predicted he would do fantastic. And I would have to agree. I thought he did awesome. Yeah, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Very personable. And uh, he's got, you know, he he didn't get so much into the storytelling. And I think that'll come as you kind of get used to the rhythm and the flow. The other thing is, well, that and also they have a third person, Booger McFarland, one of the great nicknames in NFL history, Booger. (laughs) I think his first name is Anthony. But Booger McFarland is... uh, 
a third person who's like down on the field. So, you know, there's, there's some timing issues to, to work out. It was their first regular season game, but um, I thought Jason did really well. He's such a wealth of knowledge. Yes. And I think it's going to be okay. like Tony Romo and then mm-hmm. Troy Aikman and Daryl Johnston before them, where they really use the platform as a way to educate fans about the game. I and I know that. that that was really important for, for Jason. Yeah. I love that. Love mm-hmm. that. Last thing. Your top 20, okay? Christmas oh. top 20. Oh, yeah. It's my 20th <laughs> year on the sidelines. So, Which, congratulations. Oh, that is fabulous. I, I think, you know, you just kind of show up and hope that they don't notice. It's like, oh, she's about, okay. Well, she's got a credential. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, well, today's of Christy's Top 20, since our regular season home opener is this coming Sunday, what has been your favorite regular season opener? Actually, it was an away game. Okay. And it was my very first game on the sideline. I was the booth producer in uh, for eight years. Okay. And Douglas Barricklow, who's producing today's podcast, was uh, back at the studio. So we've been working together a long time. So I've been with Cowboys awesome. Radio since 91, but 1999 was my first year on the sideline. Okay. And so we had had the preseason games, but the regular season opener was at Washington. And that was the one where uh, the Cowboys beat the Redskins in overtime. Aikman to Rocket Ismail, 76 yards in Ooh, overtime. Fun. And it was such oh. a great comeback in the fourth quarter with all these crazy plays, like Daryl Johnston recovering a fumble by Emmett, you know, j- just to maintain the ball and Michael Irvin scoring late and just to get it to overtime. It was this great rally. And then the Cowboys get the ball in, uh, in overtime and just Aikman over the top to rock it. And what, what, what stands out in my mind about it, Nikki, is uh, Chan Gailey was the head coach at the time and the play caller. And... It was just jubilation as Rocket ran into the end zone. And, and Troy Aikman and Chan Gailey, who, you know, maybe Troy wasn't his greatest fan in the, you know, the offense that Chan brought in, but one of those awkward bro man hugs <laughs> as they're jumping up and down together celebrating like, oh, you know. Yeah. And I thought, this is the greatest thing in the world. This is going to be in the Cowboys. We're going to go to so many Super Bowls, and I'm going to get to be on the sideline this time. And um <laughs> Still waiting 20 years later for the Super Bowl, but uh, but I have faith. Yes. Well, good. Good, good. Okay, I think we should do one of those every every podcast. Yeah, so yeah, if you want to if you want to uh, tweet or email mm-hmm. us one, then uh, that's fine. We we talk about different things. There are lots of fun stories from the sideline over so, 20 yes. years to share. Send them to us. Well, our time's up. We actually went over a little bit, but it's okay. Yeah, thank you, Douglas, for sticking with us late. <laughs> and thank you all, too. We appreciate you joining us for uh, Five Points Blue podcast. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but we're too afraid to ask, and we'll see you next week. This has been a production of Five Points Blue, DallasCowboys.com, and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?